An Arizona jury is deciding whether an Iraqi immigrant will spend the rest of his life in prison for the gruesome death of his daughter. Fala al-Maleki ran over his 20-year-old daughter, Noor, with an SUV in 2009. His attorneys say it was an accident, but Maricopa County prosecutors believe it was an honor killing, an act of outrage in response to Noor's westernized lifestyle. Dr. Zudi Jasser is president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. Doctor, thank you for joining Joining us, I know that you nice have you, uh, you've studied honored killings. What in this case indicates to you that it was or was not an honor killing? It clearly was. I mean, this individual had expressed to his family multiple times his his desire to control his daughter and the, her actions, and that she embarrassed. Three months before, police testified yesterday that he said he didn't care if he went to prison because she was an embarrassment to his family. Now, this isn't the Islam I know or the Islam many Muslims I know here practice, but the bottom line is this violent, barbaric act, we need to send a message that is guilty of first-degree murder, not some lightened sentence like that happens in Jordan or Pakistan that have a law that needs reform, but American law that's based in universal principles, the equality of men and women, this is the end of that slippery slope, and we need to send a clear message, and I hope the jury comes back with a, with a guilty verdict in first-degree murder. Well, help us put it into some context, because you say um, that this is not, you know, the norm, but how common is it, and, and help us to understand the mindset of someone who would feel driven to do this because his daughter was westernized. Yeah, I think we, we need to focus not just on the fact that this violent, barbaric act that nobody can relate to, but this is sort of the end of a continuum. There are over 5,000 women, Muslim girls, wives, spouses, killed a year. There's another case in New York of a so-called moderate Bridges TV that uh, the, the husband did not want to give his wife a divorce. You put a restraining order against him, and then he beheaded her and is in trial also right now. So at the end of the day, there's a continu continuum, not just of domestic violence, but basically where women in this uh, medieval interpretation of Sharia law are the property of their husbands or their fathers and they don't get equality and they can't sin on their own. They, they, if they, for example, uh, teenagers who may get pregnant disappear from sight until they deliver. Uh, they aren't allowed to dress immodestly because of the embarrassment factor. So we have to be careful to just say, oh, this is just an aberration. There's a cultural theological underpinning that we as Muslims, if we love our faith, we need to reform to get our community into the 21st century of equality of men and women. Yeah, how do you do that? Because obviously, if this is an honor killing, there should be an example set, and there should be harsh punis punishment meted out. But obviously, that does not bring back this young woman. So what can be done within the Muslim community to, to make sure it never happens? I think we need to set up safe houses, we need to set up networks where girls that feel uh, that they are being per persecuted by their families or by their husbands have somewhere to go so that they can be themselves and be westernized and free and still be Muslims and, and not feel that they're estranging their family and part of the tribe per se, that we work with feminist groups and, and uh, all groups that want to uh, help us promote the rights of women so that they have places to go so that they're not sucked into the system of theological guilt and other aspects that their families oppress them with and realize that the majority of Muslims are here in this country because we want to uh, uh, grow up and, and raise our children in a place that gives women freedom and that's why we escape places like Jordan or Syria or Pakistan that still have not gone through that modernization. Dr. Zudi Jasser, thank you so much for sharing your expertise. It's good to see you. Thank you for having me, Chris.